women are the new men. I'm a man, believe it or not, and we are on the way out. We are fast becoming an extinct subspecies, as relevant as Neanderthals, and as subtle, I'm afraid. Women are the new men. Women are more educated than men. Women are more employable than men. Women have skills like networking and empathy, which are much more relevant to this postmodern world. The coming world is the world of women. We, with our muscles and brawn and sweat, had given women the infrastructure to carry forward, to perpetuate and propagate the species. And now women don't need us anymore. They don't need us even for procreation. There's IVF. There's sperm banks. They don't need men anymore. They don't need men as companions. They shun men in relationships. They outrank men in many workplaces. They are beginning to realize, they have been realizing for decades, maybe a century and more, that men are not really necessary. And so they're phasing us out. They're outsourcing their needs either to other women or to technology. We are being replaced, substituted, dispensable, interchangeable. Men, a pathetic sight. And so here come the women, the new men of the future. But you see, among us, among us men, there were some good sorts. There were some good types. We were, we were not all bad. Remember us as we fade gently into the night. Remember those of us who had written masterpieces in literature. Remember those of us who had created the most amazing paintings and sculptures. Remember those of us who had constructed welfare systems. Remember those of us who were great doctors, medical doctors, and brought healing to large swaths of humanity. Remember those men who, day in and day out, acted as providers, put their shoulder to the burden, came back home to feed, and to sustain, and to support their families. Remember those of us who had created business empires in which today many women rule and are employed, work. Remember those of us who had created all these great institutions which are now providing women with equality and access. Because you see, men did all this. Now women wanted to participate, but they were denied access. Women were enslaved in large measure throughout this period. They were considered chattel, a form of property. They were traded. They were sex, sexually abused. They were um, subjugated and rendered submissive. In some societies and countries, they could not even divorce. But it was not all bad, and not all men were bad. I would venture to say, or dare to say, that the vast majority of men were actually good people, good persons who tried their best within the context of their cultures and societies, of course. Now, these cultures and societies were sometimes patriarchal. Sometimes they did not grant women equal opportunities, equal access, equality in any way, wage equality, voting equality. It's all true. It's all true that women had been mistreated for a very long period of time, and there's a lot of pent-up anger in women. There's a lot of rebellion and a lot of defiance, and it's only natural. It's only natural to be angry at your oppressors. It's only natural to regard men as tyrants, as insensitive brutes, and some of them are, some of them were. But you see, this is where women had gone astray, 
And yes, I am generalizing because it's true and it's applicable. And no, I am not a misogynist. I am being frequently accused by men of being gynocentric, of being actually the opposite of misogynist. I'm often accused by men by, of being a misandrist, a hater of men. I'm not a hater of men. I'm not a lover of women. I'm not a hater of women. I'm not a lover of men. I'm a scientist. I observe. I observe. I classify. I categorize. I describe. I generate predictions and hypotheses. I test them. I falsify them. That's what science does. There's no bias. Or at least we try to eliminate bias. So what do I observe? You see women having attained a measure of equality, having gained access, having risen within the ranks of workplaces and the family itself, having transformed society from the grassroots, which is a very commendable collective act of feminism, the suffragists to the feminists. Having done all this, having imbued society with a softer touch, with empathy, with networking, having injected feminine elements into education and the law and so on, having done all this, women then had gone astray. And yes, the majority of women had gone astray. This is especially prevalent, visible and observable in the younger generations. And I refer you to previous videos I've made where I cite dozens of studies to support what I'm saying. You see, the younger generations of women they emulate men. They want to become men. They want to exclude men completely, except perhaps as sex toys. They want to supplant men. They want to be men. And not only do they want to become men, but they want to become the wrong kind of men. Not the men that I've mentioned before. Not the good people among us men. Not the men who had constructed bridges who had created civilizations, who had authored magnificent literature, who have generated the most sublime music. No, these are not the men women want to imitate nowadays. They want to emulate and imitate psychopathic men, bullies. They want to Im emulate and imitate tough, rough, largely uneducated, ignorant men. The kind of men that even we as men shunned. You see, even among men, there's no consensus. It's not a, not a monolithic race. Even we men, we judge harshly womanizers. We judge harshly psychopaths and bullies. We don't like them. We think they're bad guys. We have names for them, equivalent to slut shaming. And so, Rather than emulate and imitate the good people of the past, the charity workers, the medical doctors, the painters, the sculptors, the musicians, the, rather than imitate this cadre, cadre of great men, industrialists, everything, rather than go after this model, adopt them as role models, women had adopted psychopathic bullies, womanizers and predators as their models. They emulate and imitate this riffraff, this scum, this low-life jetsam of, men of manhood. They think, women think that to act tough, to be infinitely promiscuous, to drink to, act to the point of senselessness, to get wasted, Women think these are badges of honor. These are hallmarks of virility. This makes them honorary men. They don't realize that only a fraction of men are doing these things. And they are, not, they are widely not considered men by other men. At least not good men. And yet women emulate bad guys, tough guys, bullying guys egocentric guys, narcissistic guys, psychopathic guys. And finally, we end up in a society where women are about to repeat all the mistakes that men had committed when they handed over the reins to these types of bad guys. 
women collectively had eradicated and abolished the magic and the charm that used to exist between men and women. This effervescent, indefinable, imperceptible, non-capturable entity, this electricity between the genders, when they look across each other, when they look at each other across a crowded room, this is gone, this is dead. Because today when you look at a woman, what you see is a psychopathic bully, a man. You see a man, a bad imitation of a man, may I add. A man with different genitalia. Studies, numerous studies, and I encourage you to watch my video on hookups. Numerous studies demonstrate that the social, sexual, psychological costs of this convergence of the genders, of this gravi gravi gravitational pull towards psychopathy, unigender psychopathy, the price we are paying societally and individually, collectively and personally, this price is both insurmountable, irreparable, irreversible, and threatening to the existence of a species much more than any pandemic could. Because you see, if women were to truly disappear and reappear in the form of bullying, psychopathic, narcissistic men, which is exactly what's happening in the younger generations, nothing much will be left. No sexual attraction. No family formation, no child bearing and child rearing, no future, no hope, no optimism. A dystopia, a dystopia, a deteriorating, decrepit, corrupting, decadent dystopia, where the two genders are converging on the lowest common denominator. I have dedicated my life to the study of narcissism and psychopathy. I was among the pioneers of the topic in the early 90s. And I can tell you, today, when I come across young women, everywhere, from Russia to China, from the United States to Israel, to whenever I come across young women, I see in front of me narcissistic psychopaths. And it doesn't matter how educated they are. It doesn't matter how well brought up they are. It doesn't matter, the family background doesn't matter, nothing matters. They emulate the role of a narcissistic psychopath. Sexually, they are dysregulated and unbounded. They engage exclusively in drunk, casual sex. They curse, they, they behave, their body language is that of a man. Femininity and womanhood are gone. And no, I'm not an OK boomer. I'm not a traditionalist. I'm very liberal when it comes to sexuality. I don't believe there's such a thing as sexual perversion, perhaps with the exception of pedophilia. That's not the issue at all, sex. Sex is an indicator, a seismograph, of this mind-bogglingly, mind-bogglingly big bang shift in sexual scripts, in romantic scripts, in how to behave as men and women, so that we form a wholeness, a completeness, a totality. We men feel orphaned. We feel alone. We feel abandoned. All of us were born to women. This experience of, of being abandoned by a mother is excruciating and devastating and debilitating and incapacitating. And here we are, abandoned by all women on a barren planet, a barren planet populated by an increasing number of narcissistic psychopaths. We miss you, women. We miss you. Please come back. We misbehaved with you. We mistreated you. We are sorry. We are sorry, but we are alone. We are lonely. We are sad. Please come back. Please don't become what some of us, a tiny minority, used to be, psychopathic predators. And even if you fell prey to psychopathic predators and narcissists, know that they are a small minority. 
know that the majority of men are not like that. They're good, they're helpful, they're supportive, they're empathic, they're loving, they're caring, they're compassionate, they're affectionate. And they want to create new life with you in every possible way. Don't go away. Don't give up on us. We may have become much less useful, but we're still here and we still love you. Thank you for listening.